we're going to look for setups right now. We're into a zone break, but I don't like zone breaks in between market profile. What we want to do is we want to see this break outside a market with a path of least support or least resistance on any given market that you look at. This is the S&P that we show in the room. So what we want to do is we want to find where this market could possibly have big runners at. So we use market profile. And market profile, let me skinny it down a little bit. We have low value, low value is categorized as this big green thick line. That's volume profile. It's been around since 1994. That's volume profile. That's called low value area volume profile. Or low value area. Or LVA. High value area is categorized as the red thick line. That's volume profile high value area or HVA. That's high value. So these levels are generated by the control point or the POC. This is the point of control. And this is the POC or the point of control. That's where the most volume is traded. So these levels are generated by the average, I mean the most volume is traded this morning in the S&P. All right, now what we look at is we look at two to four hour profiles to figure out where there is a big imbalance in the market. So anytime you get outside, outside of profile, meaning below low value area when we start closing below it, you're looking for the market to be imbalanced. That means it's a path of least support. You're going to see possibly major runs in the market. If you get above high value area and start closing outside of it, the market becomes imbalanced and it's a path of least resistance. And we can see runs as far as that goes. So this is a roadmap. This will be our roadmap to let us know where the market becomes imbalanced. So if you are trading, we have three setups in the trade room. We had some big setups Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. We had the zone breakout. Now the zone breakout, that's when the market is setting new lows or new highs typically. So you want to get the zone breakout when you're into imbalanced markets. But you want to stay away from the zone breakout when you're inside of profile, LV and HVA. Why? because the market is balanced. It's not, there's no path of least resistance or least support. You want to try zone breakouts when you're in an imbalanced market. So when you see these yellow triggers or these yellow entries that come up on a zone breakout, you want to get into an imbalanced market. The second setup we have is an outer edge setup, outer edge slingshot. Now the outer edge slingshot, it's okay to be inside of a balanced market because it can come up and gets outside our outer edge uh, zones that's been tested over 30 years and look for a short setup right at this high or a buy setup right at this low. So it's okay to be in an outer edge setup inside of the zone. Another good outer edge setup is with an imbalanced trend. An imbalanced outer edge setup, if the market is trending down, 
you want it to be a trend. So if it's trending down, and let's say your outer zone is up here below LVA, you'll want it to breach that outer edge, and that is a outer edge zone with market profile trend. These typically can be real big trades with an outer edge slingshot. But the outer edge slingshot, it is, it can be with imbalance direction or it can be inside a balanced market. So that's okay. We can have that outside of an imbalanced market with trend or inside a balanced market, either way. The third setup is called a failure trade. So last setup we look for in the room. A failure trade, let's say you've been outside of a imbalanced market and you've been running hard up all day or running down hard day. A failure trade happens when let's say you've been inside of a balanced market and you an imbalanced market and you get back inside a profile. So let's say you've been outside of it all day or all morning or what have you. You've been trending down, 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 and then we get back inside of low value area. If it gets back inside of it, then you look for the first retracement and get a yellow entry bar and your target is always and this has happened since the last 39 years your target is all the way up to the next high value area so if you ever outside of a low value area and get back inside of it then and starts closing inside of it look for that first retest we're looking for a high value area that's called a coast to coast trade and the opposite would be to the upside, if you're outside of an imbalanced, you come back into a balanced, you're looking for that market to show the first retracement, and you're and the target would be all the way down to low value area. Now, the failure would be tight right here because HV and LVA are tight. 78 and three quarters to 85 and three quarters, but sometimes these profiles are really large, meaning the width, and you get some big failure trades. So those are the three setups. So what you can do is you can use the market profile as your roadmap when you first log in to your computer and find out what type of market are we in. And then what we can do is we can start picking the market apart by waiting for these setups to come up in this order. Now, the zone breakout and the outer edge breakout are always with trend, meaning the zones. They're always with zone trend. The failure trade is your only corrective wave or counter wave trade, corrective wave against trend, because it was outside of an imbalance mark getting back inside. So the easiest thing to remember when you're looking for zone breakouts, you want these to happen inside of an imbalance market. You want the outer edge slingshots to happen with the imbalance market trend direction or inside of a balanced market. Either way, the failure, you want to be outside a profile and getting back inside of it. So we can use that as a tool to help us out. Now, if you look on this roadmap, we have another level. You see this thin green line and thin red line. So if we know that the thick green line is volume profile, this thin green line is low value area still because it's low value volume profile, the thick green line, that's our, our most important. Volume is most important tool. But this is developing profile. It develops as price ticks along and is developing as we tick. And HVA is developing HVA. So this is another tool we can use to confirm that the market is in an imbalanced market if you're closing outside of both of them or below them. What happens, this is a good tool to use if we're really hard trending down one day and we finally get back inside of it, retest it, it tells you if you're going to get a possible failure. This is a really good tool to watch for failure trades. But you can see they're, they're at a stack level right now. I got my developing profile LVA right over top of my volume LVA. I got my developing HVA right over top of my volume HVA. So that's what these thin lines are for. If you look at these dots, 
those are more price related and it's stacked right on top of my HVA. So you got three stack levels waiting to be broke out of. Pretty much stacked down here also. It's telling us these are great for targets. So as price ticks along, and it, once you get into an imbalanced market, these will fire off. And they'll fire off. Let's say you break down below low value area. You'll see these dots fire off down here as a target. So that will show us a big gap in the market where your targets are when you get into a zone break or an outer edge or a failure. So if we break through HVA today or low value area today and we get imbalanced, then we're looking for the market to show us these targets, to show us these targets of where we could possibly have a setup. Okay. The other way you can find targets, that's one way to find targets. We do have symmetry dots that you can put on to your own computer. We have that. We can do that. You can put on your own computer. Another way is skinny down market profile and find targets. So I look I like to look at yesterday's targets or yesterday's profile. I see a big gap in the market right now if we break low value area. It's right there. We have a big gap in the market. So I can tell that if we break down below low value area today If we break that level, that we have a big gap in the market right here. So as we're getting rejected at a high value right now, if we break low value, I have a big hole in the market right here. Giant hole in the market. No support. There's my first gap in the market if I break down low value. So if I break down 52, 78 and 3 quarters, I'm trying to get in the market with a zone breakdown an outer edge slingshot or a failure and my target is 68 and three quarters. So 78 and three quarters is 68 and three quarters is 10 S&P points. I got 10 S&P point potential right now in the market. The second gap is where the control point was yesterday. I can find out where my targets are for, for today. So my second gap is a big gap in the market and this is how you find tradable gaps to trade. And this would be 68 and three quarters down to 53 and three quarters. So you got 13 S&P points here also. So I got a 10 point gap runner, possible runner, and a 13 point gap possible runner. The next gap in the market, so you can find targets, would be 45 and three quarters. So you can see the next gap would be 53 and three quarters to 45 and three quarters, eight S&P point potential. So I got a 10 pointer, a 13 pointer and a, a eight point potential. If you can't find where levels are, you go back a little further in market profile. So I know on high value area break, I can find my upper levels too. I know, and these are two to four hour profiles. That's why they work so well. I know right now where my upper levels are. So my upper level gaps, there's my upper level gaps. If I break high value area today, which I got, just got rejected, but if I do break through it, my first target is 94 and a half from 85 and three quarters. So just under 10 S&P points. But my next tradable gap is huge. This is where you want to look for these zone breakout buys. My next tradable gap is 94 and a quarter to 15. I got 20 S&P point gap. And you want to watch this going into tomorrow with non-farm payrolls. So you can go into the trading day to find where your big gaps are and where your big potential possible ticks are for the day. I can find my tradable gaps before the market even starts trading. And I know going into non-farm payrolls in today, I know this is my largest gap. I got a 20 point S&P gap for a 20 point possible runner. That gap needs filled. And this has worked for 39 years. If you go back to market profile, watch how these gaps fill. Now, you know, just by market profile, 
you know which gaps could run the hardest by just looking at the previous gaps over here. So he, there's our big gaps in the market, right? Biggest one is a 20 point gap here. I can tell if we break below low value area here and break below low value area 68 and a half is a real big gap. This area is a real big gap. My two biggest gap that I really like is this one and this one to look for a potential big runner. Why? Because I can look at previous price action and you can tell where the previous big runners are. So if I look at this five minute chart, look at that big five minute candle through that gap. It was straight through it and then went straight down through it again. Why? It never stopped. There's no congestion. There was no, this is congestion right here. So this is good support and resistance at this level, right? So you can tell right away that this would be a gap where the market should run right through. This is a gap the market should run right through for 20 S&P points if we get an imbalanced market. So you can tell, in other words, where your tradable gaps are today. And that's what we'll do. We'll use these, we'll use our, pre, our market profile that takes all the volume in the market. This is not my opinion, not your opinion, not Gerald's opinion, no, nobody's. This is the roadmap. This is taking all the volume, all the hedge funds, prop firms, all the algorithms, every single trade that's going through on the S&P, and it's profiling it right now. It's profiling it, let us, letting us know when we're getting into an imbalanced market. Then when we get into an imbalanced market, what we can do is we can look for what? We can look for breakouts. So then you can look for breakouts in the direction of the imbalance market. So now we're into an imbalance market. Where's a possible target on this? The top possible target on a runner would be 94 and a quarter. Well, the S&P is 89 and a half. So you can tell when we get a zone breakout again, we're in an imbalance market, we're out of a balanced market, and what you want to see is you want to see a retracement happen, a zone breakout would occur, these little dots will occur, and a yellow entry bar would happen like this. So this happened at power hour yesterday. We had a breakout into an imbalanced market. Now, when I say power hour, I love that 3.30 to, to 14.10, or, or not 14.10, but um, 4, 4.10 to 4.15 Eastern. I like that 45-minute window to look for these power hour breaks. So you get these power hours when they break out like that. The same thing happened with the uh, low-value area break yesterday. We broke our low value, I mean a zone break, and we had a huge S&P point run yesterday into the close. This signal will come up from firing your speakers when this happens. Now what I want you to look at is this oscillator down here. This oscillator can be used for two of our setups. It can be used for the zone breakdowns and breakouts, and it can be used for the outer, not the outer trade, but the, um, the failure trades. It's not used for the outer edge trades. But what I, want, what I want you to do is I have two levels. I have a red level and a green level. If we get below the green level, the market is what? The market's trending hard down. If we get above the red level, the market's trending hard up. But what I want you to do is look at this. When we first break through, I'll show you this morning also. See how we break through yesterday on this big short? It gives a little, little inverse cup and handle. And then it flatlines. Once it starts flatlining, that's, this is hard trend. Same thing on the breakout at the close. We broke out, gave a little cup and handle, and we start flatlining at 1601. Started hard trend. This morning, same thing. We broke out above 100, gave a cup and handle, start flatlining. We're in a hard trend before it even broke out into this zone breakout. 
So you want these zone breakouts. You, you want this oscillator pegged on a zone breakout. It got pegged at this candle on a zone breakout. And it got pegged at this candle on a zone breakout before the, before the entry happened. So you can see that you want to go get into a strong market. All right, now these are zone breakdowns. And this is the outer edge trade. The outer edge trade, remember, can be in a balanced or imbalanced market. That's where we're getting outside of the zone and closing back inside. And your yellow bar will form for an outer edge trade. All right, so that's using market profile with entries off of the other RICO bars.